heroes of the American Civil War, the second main battery commanded by Captain James Hall. Captain James Hall and the second main battery had no idea what the day had in store for them when they left Marsh Creek with the rest of the First Corps early on the morning of July 1st. Hall, a stolid-looking 27-year-old redhead with a bushy walrus mustache and hazel eyes, had entered service with the battery as a lieutenant back in November 1861. He advanced to command when the unit's original captain, former Maine Adjutant General Davis Tilson, was promoted. On July 1st, Hall had six 3-inch ordnance rifles in his battery, with 127 men and officers reporting for duty. A 3-inch ordnance rifle, model 1861, was a wrought iron muzzle, loading rifled cannon, that was adopted by the United States Army in 1861 and widely used in field artillery units during the American Civil War. It fired a 9.5-pound projectile to a distance of 1,830 yards at an elevation of 5 degrees. Hall reported personally to Major General John Fulton Reynolds, who posted the battery in an advanced position along Chambersburg Pike to shell Confederate artillery to the west. Hall wasn't happy to have his guns so exposed, and his fears were soon justified when rebel troops appeared on his right, rising up from the unfinished railroad cut. With their infantry support falling back, Hall and his battery were forced to make a fighting retreat. The boys fought like the devil, never better, Hall later told John Hodsden, Maine's adjutant general. You may judge when I tell you that many of our horses were not shot but bayoneted, that it was a close and desperate struggle for our guns, two of which they actually had hold of at one time. I have seen hard fighting before and been badly smashed up, but I never saw a battery taken from the field and its guns saved in so bad a state as the old second came off that day. The battery's main monument is on the Chambersburg Pike, where it fought on July 1st. There's a smaller position marker on Cemetery Hill, where it fought on the afternoon of July 2nd, until the recoil from a shot shattered an axle and the battery had to move back to make repairs. I sent a sergeant with five men after the piece, all of whom were wounded or taken prisoners. I had got near to the position I had been ordered to take when I received another order from General Wadsworth to bring my guns immediately back. The officer bringing the order saying he would show me the road to take, which was the railroad grading leading out from town which was swept at the time by two of the enemy's guns from the hills beyond, through the excavations at Seminary Hill. Having gotten onto this road, from its construction I could not turn from it on either side, and was obliged to advance 1,200 yards under this raking fire. Arriving at Seminary Hill, I found no one to show me the position I was to occupy, and placed my battery in park under cover of the hill, and went forward to see where to take position, when I again met an aide of General Wadsworth, who ordered me to go to the right along the woods, pass over the crest and over a ravine, and there take position. Obeying this order, I moved toward the right, until met by an orderly, who informed me I was going directly into the enemy's lines, which were advancing from this direction. I halted my command and rode forward, but before reaching the described position was fired upon by the enemy's skirmishers. I then countermarched my battery, and moved to near the seminary, and was going forward to ascertain, if possible, where to go. When I met Colonel Wainwright, who informed me my abandoned gun was still on the field, and that he had refused to put the battery into the position desired by General Wadsworth, I then took a limber and went back upon the field with one sergeant, and recovered the abandoned gun with parts of all the harness, and immediately moved back through the town, putting my only three guns which were not disabled in position, by order of General Howard, on the left of the cemetery. On the second, we opened fire in reply to the enemy's guns at 4.15 p.m. and continued in action until the enemy's artillery ceased for the day, during which time another gun was disabled by its axle breaking by the recoil, when I was relieved by a battery from the reserve artillery, and by order of General Newton, went to the rear to repair damages, and the battery took no further part in the engagement. Casualties first day, 18 men wounded and 4 taken prisoners, 28 horses killed and 6 wounded. One gun carriage rendered useless, two axles broken. The second day, one axle broke. Fired during engagement, 635 rounds of ammunition. Very respectfully, your obedient servant, James A. Hall. It's your history. Learn it. Know it, love.